How many of you have to ride horses down the road? So let me explain that. That's probably the most dangerous of a situation you're going to find yourself getting into with your horse is riding down the road. And horses have a hard time seeing things that are down low. So sometimes what happens is the ditch is down low. And if you've ever noticed that when you ride on the road, what happens is they look at the ditch, so they bend to the outside. Well, what does that do to their rib cage? Puts it right towards the center of the road, doesn't it? So what happens is people end up going down the road and their horse is veering into the middle of the road. Another problem with that, your horse can't see cars coming up behind. So you're going down the road and he's looking out to the right, to the outside. He's not seeing a car coming to his left. And wherever their rib cage is pointed, that is the direction they're going to spook. So if their rib cage is to the left and they spook, they're following because their feet are right there. So the ribs tell you where they're about to go and where the horse's legs are about to go. So what I like to do is this. Once again, it's up to me to be situationally aware of what's going on around me. I'm the brains and he's the feet, hopefully. That's the plan. So when we ride down the road, it goes something like this. If I'm riding down the road and I'm on the right side, last time I checked, we drive on the right side here. When a car comes up behind me, what I do is I get in time with that rib cage swing and I ask him to step his rib cage to the outside and I just slightly squeeze and release that inside rein. And so I tell him, notice the ear, I'll ride that ear back. So he goes, hey, there's a car back there. So not only do I show him the car, that the car is coming, but I set it up so if he spooks, we're going in the ditch and we're not going to go in the center of the road. Does that make sense? Now that's just one little example of how a little bit of dressage work could go a long way on the trail to, to keep us from getting in, in trouble. So let's work on leg yield at the trot now. And leg yield would be this. Leg yield would be a lateral movement, but you're going forward and sideways at the same time. Now, when I do this, I will slightly it's post into my outside stirrup. As I rise up, this is the tricky part. If I need a little inside leg, it'll be as I'm out of the saddle, not when I'm sitting. It's so common that people apply the leg aid when they're sitting, and we call that frogging. If I squeeze my legs every time I sit down, I look like a frog. And I don't want to look like a frog, right? So what I do is I think about applying my inside leg aid when I'm out of the saddle. So get going with the trot and think to yourself, this trot, trot. Every time I rise up, I think trot, trot, trot. So I start to establish a nice rhythm. And then what I do is as I'm out of the saddle, I might apply a little inside squeeze with my inside rein and leg, slight, and I step slightly into my outside stirrup. We're going to reverse direction. So now I'm starting to squeeze my right rein and right leg. And as I'm up, that's when I leg him to move over, when you're out of the saddle. You might find that that's a little bit tricky at first. If you're sitting, so let's say you don't post that much. Well, let's talk about sitting. I don't want you to think about sitting down. I want you to think about sitting up. It's if the trick to sitting in a saddle and not bouncing is to think about sitting up. Lift your sternum. So think about your head going up, up, up. So if I encourage my horse to lift his back, I'm still in the saddle. I have three points of contact, but I'm thinking about sitting up, lifting. You see that? So when I lift, now we can step over. We can leg yield. It's the same timing as if you were posting, only now we're sitting. So as I go up, I just think about stepping them over. See? Or go back the other way. Think about the up. Exaggerate the up to yourself when you ride, sitting up. Canter work. Somebody have a question? Or say that again? Gated horses. So, 
something about gated horses would be you're still receiving the horses back. And I don't want to get myself in trouble. That happens sometimes. But one thing about gated horses is you don't necessarily need to have a chair seat. And we can, we, I won't spend a whole lot of time on that. What I can tell you is this. The proof is in what you see and what you ob observe. And when I watch people ride, I get a lot of gated horses in for training. And when I see people sit and get their femur back and get that leg centered under, I immediately see horses lift their backs up and, and come over their back and use, use their hind and lower their head. Now with gating, you still have up. There's still an up. I know it's a little, it can be flatter, and it, but you still have an aspect of, I don't want to sit heavy on their back and hollow them. I want to sit in a way that encourages lift. So all those stretches, Paula, my wife, wrote a really nice stretching book, and she taught, and so the idea behind the stretches is to get us to lift the sternum. So you're still gating, you're still lifting the sternum, we're still using focus, all that will, will apply.